everyone, thanks again for joining on Sewer for Good. If you haven't remembered to subscribe yet, please do so. Today, I'm gonna to talk about why grout colors might change in that tile bed. So why does grout color change in applications often with these waterproof membranes for the tile bed? Well, there are a variety of reasons, and I'm not gonna to get to all of them, but these are the primary ones that we get to and we see constantly, and a lot of the experts in the industry have reinforced this to us as well with our team. First and foremost, use a good quality grout and use a grout that's right for the application. Is it for wet areas? Is it for dry areas? Does it need an additive in there? Is there a mold resistant grout you might need to use? But most importantly, mixing the grout correctly. Okay, the mixing instructions are so important that you actually pay attention. Now you might think I've used dozens of different grout brands before. There may not be the same method of mixing across all the manufacturers. So it pays to read the back of the label or even ask the manufacturer or the tile merchant where you've bought that grout from on the instructions because grout technology is always on the improve and it may be the mixing procedures that will differentiate and ensure that you don't get that grout color change. The other part that we see that goes wrong with tile grout colors is using too much water. Okay, sometimes guys think, oh, I'll just add a bit more water because it'll give me longer pot life and you get that inconsistency. And what ends up happening is water with grout, which is cementitious, then you find you have a different water staining or a different consistency of color in that grout joint. And it might look easy when you're applying it, but then you step back at the end of the day and your client will see that either on the wall or on the floor, there's a shade difference. And that's only to get worse. The other thing is porous tiles, okay, sometimes can draw out the moisture from the grout rapidly. So in that situation, that's where you may want to ensure that you've got a grout that is a slow setting one, or do you need to actually seal the edges of some of those tiles that stop the prevention of rapid absorption from the grout itself? So you've got to make sure that a porous tile, if you're using a porous tile, what is the suggested grout to be used with that? Now, there are other grouts in some applications that are either two component, have got a high polymer content, or even maybe an epoxy grout, okay? And those applications there, ensure again that you are using the grout to the correct instructions on that porous tile. The other part we see is when you've got a moisture bed. Now effluorescence is often a big concern these days and we see it more frequently in the market with tile grout going white or that effluorescence phenomenon coming through and often it's to do with the tile bed below. Now you may have waterproofed on top of the screen but you may have not and if you've got the waterproofing under the screed and you're laying tiles on a tile bed and there's residual moisture, that can impact the efflorescence phenomenon. Now, primers like our HO primer, or there's other products on the market that you may want to apply on that screed or on that tile bed, they will slow down or prevent the efflorescence phenomenon coming through where you get moisture from the bed into the grout joint, which is the same effect as when you put too much water in your grout. So these are the little things to understand before you apply it because the grout is the last part of the tile job that really makes the, the job finish and, and look perfect. And if you have got that wrong, it's going to ruin the whole tiling application. And these are things we see time and time again about grout. And you speak to all the grout manufacturers globally and they'll tell you these are often is application that ends up causing the discoloration, not so much the quality of the grout. tile adhesive left in joints, tile joints, okay? Don't get sucked into thinking, I'm just, I don't want to grout all these areas, I've got a big grout joint, and if there's a bit of adhesive in there, oh, the same color, I've got a gray grout, and I've got a gray tile adhesive, or I've got a white tile adhesive and a white grout, and it's gonna cover it up. It will impact the coloring and the shading. Ensure that you don't leave your tile adhesive in the joints of the grout, so you've got a nice, clean joint to grout and infill with the grout because a grout acts as a compressive seal okay it's not a flexible seal but it's compressive and also has a bit of compression in there unlike a tile adhesive that's a far higher MPA strength now AS3958.1 
the tiling standard does go into grout applications and how to grout. Follow that instruction. If you're the builder, ensure that your tile is doing the right job. Great tilers always do a great job and waterproofers need to understand as well that you shouldn't be leaving, if you're using a cementitious system, you're not leaving high beds of membrane anywhere. You get a nice smooth finish for the tiler to put his, his tiling bed down and the tile is then responsible for his tile bed and his grouting application. If you'd like to know more details about the grouting side or questions that might have come up, our technical team are there to help you, 1-800-650-435. Please don't forget to subscribe to Seal for Good. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.